So are you an aspiring professional photographer who's considering offering free shoots in order to build your portfolio? Well, in this video, I'm going to cover how to go about booking free shoots the right way so you don't have to waste time or effort. What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. For aspiring wedding and portrait photographers who are having trouble finding opportunities to second shoot, assist, or shadow another established photographer, sometimes offering free shoots is really the only option. But there is a right way to go about doing so. At a high level, this entails first deciding what type of work you want to show in your portfolio and also deciding on the target clientele you want to serve. From there, you want to offer free shoot opportunities to that target clientele in the style that you want to do. From there, just do this for three different clients and you're ready to start attracting paid clients and charging for your photography. To help further explain these key concepts, I'm going to share with you guys some key moments from a recent coaching call I had with a photographer from Northern Ireland. What is the major challenge that you're facing? I'm having a really hard time of getting enough clients to fill in my portfolio, at least to make my future clients feel comfortable that working with professional photographer, you know. Yeah. So from what you're saying is you're, again, you're having a hard time. Um, yes. getting getting enough clients right exactly. Challenges. And you, yeah and you'd like to um, fill your up your portfolio with the goal of having prospective clients feel comfortable hiring you is that correct yes. Yes. okay tell me a little bit about what you think is enough like you you describe like you want to have enough clients to fill your portfolio in your mind how much photos or how much portfolios do you think is enough i'm not really sure um maybe i would say enough would be two engagement or two engagement and two weddings that would be enough okay so think about this think about this situation you're for example you're you and your wife are not married yet what what would you look for as a client a prospective client that would make you feel comfortable when analyzing somebody's portfolio? What are the things that you think you would look for or that you think your target client would be looking for? Let's, let's brainstorm that a little bit. Okay. When we were looking for our photographer for our wedding, um, mm -hmm. we were kind of looking for someone who can make each shots um, natural and clean and something that uh, we can keep forever. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the basic things that we are looking for, actually. And when you were looking for a photographer, were you looking for a certain quantity of photos? Like, because you, you, you described that you wanted to get enough work on your portfolio. So let's connect the dots between that a little bit. When yeah. you were looking, do you think that the amount of work that someone showed was an indicator of whether you would hire them or not? Or were you looking specifically for the natural and clean look and um, photos that you felt like you can keep forever? What do you think? Yeah, we're not actually keen on that. Basically looking uh, on photos that we can, yeah, on photographers that we can uh, keep. If you think about your dream client or clients that, I think you describe them as like spot on clients. What, what do you mean by that? You mean like clients that are the right ones? Basically right now, I don't have a choice whether mm -hmm. they want it to be just a regular couple shots or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I, can, I, can, uh, I can get the job done. Yeah. A pitfall that a lot of beginner creatives in general, not just photographers, but beginner creatives in general, they think they have to be a little bit free about like the clients that they pick in the beginning, but you're doing these for free. You have to remember that you're doing it for free. You have the power to say yes or no, okay? So mm -hmm. let's think about it a little bit. What is your dream client? Say you have five years from now, you have the successful business. The phone is ringing all the time, right? You can't yes. take everyone. So who are the ones that you will take? These are the type of clients that I want. How would you describe those people? How would you describe the type of photos that you're making for them? What are the type of people you want to serve? And what type of photos do you want to give them? Yes. Yeah, so right now I'm basically, basically focusing on um, engagement. But as far as like the couples themselves, is there any type of traits or personality things or aesthetics that you, you personally enjoy and that you think other people would enjoy? On the last couple session that I had, I only went on 
um, the natural type, or, or mostly journalistic type of photography. Mm-hmm. At this point, you think your focus and what you want, the direction you want to go into is more natural, more candid, journalistic type of photography. Yeah. And then would you say that if you had a dream client, they would be looking for that same thing too? I guess so, because I think most of the people right now, they're kind of conscious when it comes to facing the camera, when you're mm-hmm. directing directing them all the time you don't sure. get the natural emotions yep. coming from them you know you know mm-hmm. what i mean what i'm hearing from you is that you're trying to think about things that you've done before and also yeah. things that you think people want but um I, what i want you to step back a little bit is let's think about your life you ha- have a job already right mm-hmm. and you're only giving these things for free so i i want to encourage you to just kind of stake a claim for now you don't have to stick to it forever but right now just think about what do i want to shoot and who are the type of people that i want to work with because once you decide that that unlocks the keys to your entire business you know how to write sentences for advertisements you know what to show in your portfolio you know how to do everything because you have a you know what you want to do and you know the people you want to give it to before you know that you're going to be completely overwhelmed and if you make a product for everybody or a service for everybody you're making it for nobody because you cannot satisfy everyone. You can only satisfy the people who like what G does and the the type of people that you want to work with. Because I know you're in this mindset, like I don't have enough clients, but the moment you start deciding what type of clients you want and the type of work that you want to, to do, it will help you formulate everything. So, so write those questions down is who do I want to work with and think about it from the perspective of like, what do they do? What is their personality like? What is their interest like? And then in the realms of photography, what type of photos do they like? What type of photos are they looking for? What do they want in the photos and what do they not want in the photo? Those are all important questions that you need to answer for yourself because we'll move on and I'll show you why. You also have to intersect that with what do you also personally enjoy and what is the style that you want to do. So once we come up with the answers to those questions, then that dictates one, the type of clients that you're going to look for when you're doing free sessions. For example, if you only want to photograph people who want to do photojournalistic, more natural stuff, if you get a free client and all they want to do is photos that are looking at the camera, that's all they want. It's not going to serve the purpose. We're going to get nowhere. We're going to go backwards. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. It does. Because then all the photos that you'll get to put on your portfolio are the ones that they're looking at the camera. And that's not our goal. You want to do more photojournalistic, more natural natural stuff, right? Yes, that's right. So how are you finding these couples in the first place who want to do free photo sessions? The regular ad- advertisement. Okay. Basically. Okay. So think about this. Um, what is the, what is the wording that you use in the advertisement? Uh, if, 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 if you don't remember then I'll, I'll I'll just give you some examples so if you just put like free photo session that's one thing right but imagine yeah. if you just added one more one more phrase like free engagement session in photojournalistic style you see you see how that's different you can say are you tired of photos where everyone's looking at the camera I'm offering a free engagement session in the photojournalistic style limited time offer do you, mm-hmm. do, you do you kind of see how the first one is just free engagement session right And the second one is targeting a specific person and turning off people that don't progress your goal. Yes, I understand that. Cool. When you make an advertisement, right, you have to pay some money and you pay per like click or per impression. So I would say it's better to start putting the qualifier in just a couple sentences in there to tell people that, oh, I'm only going to do documentary style work. So now you know that when everyone who clicks that advertisement, they already know, oh, G is only going to offer us the photos in this documentary natural way, not the ones that we're looking at the camera. When you email them, they already know that. Does that make sense? What if I told you that five of the people that click on it want only camera aware photos and then five of them want the documentary style. But if you change the wording, I can guarantee you that one person that clicks it's going to do camera aware photos and then nine people are going to be looking for documentary natural way. Does that make sense? You want to start all the way from the beginning of where you started in the first place. These couples found you through a Facebook ad. So we want to make sure that the Facebook ad is already going to give you the opportunity to work with the couples that you want to work with in that documentary natural style. And then once you do the, those sessions, then we can put that in our portfolio and only show documentary natural style. Mm -hmm. And then now you'll have enough work at the end of this effort to have again, photos in the documentary natural style so that when you as a prospective client are looking for someone that has a specific direction is like, then when you go on your website, that's all you see. 
you don't have to worry about filtering through the camera aware photos and stuff like that because you were never looking for those type of free clients in the first place. Because when you're doing something for free, you want to be very judicious. You want to make sure that your time is limited. You don't want to spend time away from your wife, um, especially during all this stuff. Like they need to be calculated risks. So mm-hmm. make sure that the opportunities that you're taking for free sessions are going to serve the purpose of your end goal, which is to give yourself enough work. And when you just told me that, right, you said, I wasn't really keen on looking for the number. I was looking for the style. So now we know that we need to focus on just the style, right? Yes. Exactly. But there, there was a possibility that what if every single person that clicked and did your advertisement, what if every single person didn't like documentary style? That was a risk that you were taking by not writing that down. So that's why I want to challenge you that think about those questions that I, I asked you, answer them and then write an advertisement that hits on those things. It says what you're not going to get and it says what you're going to get. When you're paying for opportunities, you want to make sure that you're making the most of your money. You know what I mean? I'm sure you like your money, right? You don't want to be wasting money throwing it in the garbage. So don't don't waste it on opportunities that don't fit what you want to do. So there's one thing I also want to kind of introduce to you is um, kind of like this scarcity mindset. I think the, the main reason that it sounds like it is you're worried that the people won't come. Does that sound correct? Yes, that's right. Uh Okay. And that's fine. I understand that. I was in your situation before, but you have to kind of understand that every opportunity is not a good one to some degree, because if you start getting more opportunities for couples that everyone wants to do camera aware photos, then you're going to be propelling your business in the wrong direction. Does that make sense? Because you can only hire what you show and you can only show what you've done. If all that you've done is the wrong thing, then you're only going to get hired for the wrong thing. So you want to make sure you're going in the right direction from the very beginning. So I want to encourage you to be a little more judicious because this is your free time. This isn't, they're not paying you. Right now you're focusing on one, building a portfolio and attracting the right people and enough of the right people. It's hard to do that when you just started. My rule of thumb is do three free things first or three cheap things and then pick the best photos, three to five of them from those opportunities that fit the description that you said that you wanted. So you personally said you wanted natural and clean. You wanted documentary. Pick three of the best photos from there and make sure they are a little bit, have some type of variation and then put it on your website and just leave it there. So then I can go on your portfolio. I'm going to look at G's portfolio for engagement sessions. And I see nine different photos from three different couples that are very good at showing that you're skilled at documentary, natural engagement photography. That's enough for me to think that you're good. Your, your focus is on getting enough clients based on your portfolio. So that's what I'm helping you solve is you need a portfolio that shows what you want. And then we also are attracting some leads through advertisements. So we want to make sure that we're attracting the correct ones that will fill the portfolio. Once you fill that portfolio up with those nine photos, stop giving it for free. The way that you have to look at these clients that you get in the beginning that are free, there's a potential that they might not refer you to anybody. And you don't really need that because the only thing that they can tell their friends is, oh, I did it for free. So it was okay. And that's not what you want. So what you want to do is just use them for their purpose, which is to build your portfolio. That is an investment worth making is using your time and your skills to create a portfolio. That, that's a good return. Um, and then after that, once the portfolio is already built, you need to get out of the mindset that I need to build more portfolio and you actually have to start turning this into a business, which is to make money off of, of a service that you give. Okay, so to recap, start with deciding on the type of work or style that you want to do and also decide on your target market or clientele that you want to serve. Next, you want to offer opportunities for a free shoot using this style and target clientele as a filter. This could be direct messages or emails to family and friends in your network or even just paid ads on Facebook or Instagram. The important thing is to use tailored images and use tailored messaging to attract the right clients looking for the right kind of work and filter out the wrong clients who are looking for a photography style that you do not want to do. After that, pursue these opportunities and photograph at least three different clients. Assemble the best images from those three shoots that best highlight your desired photography style and make sure to show some versatility and consistency across your work. And after that, you're ready to start charging for your work and adding to this portfolio over time. Again, selecting only the images that highlight your unique photography style and that adds versatility and shows consistency. So I'm curious, was this type of video about photography business and including the coaching call helpful to you? Let me know what you thought down below in the comments. If you learned something new today, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as I make a new Fujifilm or photography video every week. 
And if that's too long, please follow me on Instagram at at Photo as I post new tips, tricks, and tutorials throughout the week. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.